Oh la la. Hi everyone and welcome to today's lesson where we will be exploring the concept of angles within the field of geometry. So today we will be introducing the concept of an angle, looking into what an angle actually is and how it can be useful when applied correctly. We will then be exploring certain different types of angles including right angles and also acute and obtuse angles a little bit later on. And then finally we're going to end on having a look at parallel and perpendicular lines and how they relate to angles. So let's go over a little introduction on what an angle actually is in the field of maths and geometry. Although you may have covered um, angles in the past and you may have dealt with them before, it's important to refresh your memory and go back to basics just to make sure that you properly understand what an angle is. So here we have defined an angle as a measurement of the circular distance between two lines connected at a point. And what I mean by circular distance, so let's take a step back and imagine what a, a straight distance looks like. So imagine we have a line like this and we want to measure that, um, for example, within metres. We can say that the straight distance of that line is three metres. But when I talk about a circular distance, it concerns this space in between two lines here and that's what we call the angle. And essentially what an angle can be defined as is measuring the sharpness of a point here or the circular distance between two lines as shown here. And because we know an angle is measuring something, in this case it's measuring a circular distance, we then have to quantify how big or small this, dif this distance might be in certain cases. So for example, if we're measuring a length, we know that we can use meters to quantify that length. Therefore, we have to do the same when we're dealing with angles. And one of the most popular ways of measuring an angle in mathematics is using degrees. And how we symbolize that we're using degrees in a problem or a sketch, we have the quantity here in this case, it is 45. And then we have this little small circle that just sits on top of the number. And if we see this, we know that an angle is being represented in degrees. So in this example here, we can also say that the angle might be 45 degrees. Now let's have a look at three examples so we can actually see different angles um, within a problem. So starting on the left here, we can see that the space in between these two lines is the smallest Therefore, it is the smallest angle. And as the space increases from the next two examples, we can see that the angle also increases. So let's quantify each of these using degrees. So this one on the left, we're going to say that this may be an angle of 30 degrees. And the next one up here, we know we've increased the space, therefore it has to be bigger than 30 degrees. So we can say that, looking at these two here, they look quite similar. So just for an example, we might say that this is also 45 degrees. And then the last one it has to be bigger than 45 again. But in this, this is a special case actually, because if you look at each of the way I've represented these first two angles with this sort of circular line, and that's not the case in this last one. We have this sort of square in the corner here. And what that symbolizes is a right angle. And what a right angle represents is a quarter turn. As we can see here, it's almost like the corner of a square that has this perfect angle shape. And what a right angle represents in degrees is an angle of 90. So we know that a right angle in mathematics is always 90 degrees, this sort of shape here. So we've started with 30 degrees here, we've increased the angle to 45, and then finally we have a right angle, so we've increased it to 90 degrees. So we mentioned that this type of angle here, where we have the quarter turn or the sort of perfect square edge here, we call this a right angle, this space in here, which represents 90 degrees. And when we have two lines, as we see here, represented in this fashion, in a right angle, then we call these two lines 
perpendicular lines and what that means is that this line here and this line here lie perpendicular to each other in other words that the space in between them is 90 degrees now imagine the case where we have two lines which basically don't have any angle between them at all and that's what these would look like here if we look at these two lines and we imagine that if they went on forever and ever and ever these set of lines would not meet at all they would never meet and they're exactly straight with one another and what we call these two lines are parallel lines and then maths we know that two lines will be parallel to each other if they both have the same angles between them so for example if these two lines are parallel then this line will have the same angle as that line and like we know that perpendicular lines are represented through a right angle well we can symbolize parallel lines within mathematics by having these small little arrows running through the pair and then if we do that we know we're dealing with parallel lines now let's look at an example where we might see right angles perpendicular lines and parallel lines in the real world by looking at a football pitch. So beginning with right angles, we know that if we look at this football pitch example here, we can see plenty of right angles straight away due to the amount of rectangles that we have within the, the lines on the pitch. And therefore, if we have right angles, we have the perfect quarter turn corners and that has the 90 degree angles that we're looking for. So to begin, we'll have a look at the corners here. We can see that each one of these corners are perfectly right angled. We then know that these are two separate rectangles within here. So therefore these angles within here, 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 and also over here are all right angles as well. And then finally, in each of the 18 yard boxes and the six yard boxes here, we have more right angles that we can identify. So now moving on to have a look at perpendicular lines. We know that whenever there was a right angle, there's going to be an equivalent set of perpendicular lines. So we're not going to go through all of them, but just to give a few, a few examples, we'll say that if we pick this line here, we know that line there has a right angle within this area and this area. Therefore, it must be perpendicular with both this line here and this line here. So we can say that as an example. These two lines drawn are perpendicular lines on the football pitch. And then finally, let's have a look at where we can see parallel lines. So again, parallel lines are lines that never cross with each other and have the same angle. So we can see that if we take this line here, for example, we know that it will never cross with this opposite line here because we can see that they're perfectly in alignment with each other and they have the same angles. Another example of parallel lines that we can see would maybe be this 18 yard line right here. That would be parallel with the halfway line as well because we know that they never cross each other and if we wanted to do this professionally what I mentioned before we could draw a little set of arrows between these two as an example so we know that both this line here and this line here are parallel so that pretty much covers it for right angles at the moment so we're going to move on to look at different types of angles and in the real world, we know that not angles are right angled. We also have smaller angles and bigger angles, and that's what we're going to look at right now. So first of all, looking at angles that are smaller than 90 degrees, such as these two examples we have here, these sort of angles are known as acute angles. And these can be anything ranging from anything above zero degrees, obviously because that wouldn't make an angle if there's zero degrees between them, but all the way up to 90 degrees as well, all of these angles are classed as acute. So for example, an angle of 
30 degrees might be acute, 45, 60, even 89 degrees, all of these angles fall under being acute angles, anything smaller than 90. And the other type of angle that we're going to be talking about are obtuse angles, which we can see here are angles that are bigger than 90 degrees in this case. So for example, we can see that both this angle here and this one have a bigger space in between these two lines than a right angled triangle, therefore they are classed as obtuse angles. But one important thing to remember about obtuse angles is, although that they are bigger than 90 degrees, they are smaller than 180 degrees. Now what is 180 degrees, what does that look like? Well we know that 90 degrees is a quarter turn as shown here. So therefore 180 degrees is 90 and 90, it's double that of a right angle. So as I've drawn here, imagine we have two right angles back to back. So what 180 degrees basically is, is a straight line. Therefore that means that an obtuse angle can't go past the straight line angle. Therefore it must be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, although it's bigger than a right angle, it's no bigger than the angle that would make with a straight line, and that is an obtuse angle. So since we're on the topic of bigger and bigger in angles, you might actually ask yourself, well, how big of an angle can we actually get within maths? Well, we already mentioned that one half rotation is 180 degrees. Therefore, if we want to make one full rotation about a point, then that's going to be double 180 degrees, which works out to be 360 degrees. Therefore, in order to make one full rotation, or the biggest angle that you can essentially get when performing an action is 360 degrees. So just to recap on this slide, we said that acute angles are angles that are smaller than 90 degrees. Obtuse angles are those that are bigger than 90, but smaller than 180. And to make one full rotation, i.e. the biggest angle that we can possibly get, is 360 degrees. One way that I often use to remember the difference between an acute and an obtuse angle, if we take the word acute and think of cute things, we often associate them with things that's being small. So if we remember cute being small angles, then we can differentiate between an acute and an obtuse angle. So to summarise, let's recap everything that we went over in this lesson. We said that an angle is a measurement of the circular distance between two lines connected at a point, or in other words, it's measuring the sharpness of a point. We said that we often measure angles in degrees, and to give an example, we use this little circle here to symbolise it. We said that a right angle is an angle of 90 degrees. We said that perpendicular lines are lines that are right angles or 90 degrees to one another. And that parallel lines are lines that never cross with each other and have the same angle. We now know that acute angles are angles that are smaller than a right angle and therefore between 0 and 90 degrees. And finally, we now know that an obtuse angle are those that are bigger than 90 degrees, but smaller than 180 degrees. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.